I have tips. Today's video is gonna be a bit special. You can tell because it's different colors on the walls and my cap turned black. Every time I make a video, I tell myself I'm gonna be efficient. Record one day, edit one day, out by Sunday. But it never happens. It's only a dream. Nobody told me video editing is time consuming, but today we're going through with that. Two days tops. Today I'm gonna give you some tips. So it's honestly very basic stuff that I just figured out too late. And today I'm gonna pass it on to you. Now I use Ableton, but all the stuff I'm gonna show you is applicable in other programs as well. Today we're making this beat. There are several ways to go about it. Now I see a bunch of people just dropping audio samples on audio tracks, and that's all good. Except it's not. You should always use samplers or drum racks. Drum racks works as well. Let's start making a beat and I'm gonna show you why. Let's have a snare. I like to pick a swing and then make it barely noticeable. It gives it this drunk feel. Now I want some texture on this beat to make it a bit more organic. Oh, this one's beautiful, it's, it's beautiful. All right, so we made a beat. Now let's say I wanna reuse this beat in another track. Maybe we'll like the way the drums moves, but we wanna replace the sounds in it. I can drag this one, like that, drunk drums. Next time we're gonna use it, we can just replace the samples over here. This way we can recycle this beat in like different songs. And I'm all about recycling. So next thing, you can fiddle around with attack, release and stuff like that in uh, the sampler. Let's say I want the hat less click and more like a shake. I can do this. Yeah, easy. Let's say I want more attack on the snare. Usually you would get a compressor, but now you don't have to. This way you get much more control over your attack, your release. If you can do something in the synthesizer, you should do it in the synthesizer. In this case, the sampler. Also, since this is a MIDI track, we can actually use MIDI effects on that. So this is a basic ARP. And if you have some knobs, you can just like freestyle your beat. Go nuts with your knob, I don't care. <laughs> so yeah, I wanna sidechain the texture. Every time the kick plays, the texture disappears a bit. I usually use an external signal for this. Just copy the MIDI from the kick. Sounds like that. So this way we get much better control over the values, the attack and release, because this signal is so short. And you say, Oh, I need a sampler every time I put it on a MIDI track and that takes time. No, you don't have to. Please listen. Every time I click this button, a new sampler shows up. So here's what you do. Now you can take a look at your projects and figure out which instruments and effect you like to use a lot. For me, it's this MIDI pitch, the sampler, the EQ, and the limiter. Now we just click this button. Save as a default MIDI track. So every time you bring out a new MIDI track, you're already gonna have this stuff. Uh, also, uh, you can do this for audio tracks as well. On audio tracks, I use just an EQ and the limiter. Saves time. I say we go figure out some chords. that doesn't need to be 100% straight it's chill cow beats I want to cut little holes in the audio file to make it sample choppy something like that maybe let's make it wobbly yeah now it's almost as drunk as the beat now since we're messing around with the EQ you might as well toggle the oversampling mode because it sounds better simple as that I'm not gonna explain the rocket science behind this, but this guy might. In short, it allows the EQ to process double the sample rate. Now, you might not notice the difference on an individual track, but if you use a lot of this EQ, it's gonna sound much cleaner if you toggle the oversampling button. And once you've done that, you click this button. Every time you bring out the EQ, it's automatically gonna be in oversampling mode. Bonus tips! Might as well do the same thing for the saturator, save as default preset, and the reverb. Now save it and never think about it again. Easy as that. It takes a bit more of a processing power, but as long as you're not on uh, Grandpa's Windows 95, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, I want some funky bass on this. Now I feel like we need a little bit more schmutz on the chords. Nothing bored Samsung can solve. 
I want to change up the chords the second round just so we have some variation. It's a bit Christmassy, I like it. Let's do some wobbly wobbles. You can make it a bit more drunk by automating the size in the dimension expander. That's the whoop I want. Let's take this wob and recycle it and make like a synth riff. And then I wanna add a fifth. So this is more of a creative tips. Let's say we want to add some fun stuff in the top end. We have this guy over here. Freeze the track, bring it to a new order track. We see here that Ableton made a guess about where the transients are. Usually it guesses completely wrong when you're having to do with chords. And we're gonna use it to our advantage. Set your warp algorithm to beats. You wanna preserve transients. Usually when you have it in this mode, it plays from one of these points and then loops the sample. But if you set it to this mode, it won't do that. Here you control the decay of the sample. So yeah, if we set it to this value, transpose it up 12 step, so sound like that. And it's glitchy and fun. Music is supposed to be fun. Have some fun, come on. Let's hear what it sounds like. A bit too crazy over here. So I'm gonna delete some of these points. I'm gonna put a delay on that. Now sometimes this might be a bit too crazy. So I'm gonna show you a different way you can uh, go about this. Beats, transpose it up. But this time we'll set it to eight notes or 16 notes. Whatever your uh, heart desires. Now we have kind of a rhythm. Now remember the drunk groove from before? I'm gonna put it on here. That's what I want my Sundays to sound like. Now if you want more of like wobby effect, whoop, 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 whoop. you can use an auto pan and then you do this face. Now it's an LFO, easy as that. I have the next tips. So let's say we wanna fill around with uh, one of these tracks. We can freeze one of those and bring it to a new audio track. That's no problem. Let's say we wanna freeze several into one. Create an audio track, click resampling, arm it. So all of the tracks you want here, yeah. Oh, I don't care what you do with it. You do whatever you want, but now you have it at least. Free sample just the drums. And reverse it just to make things a bit more spicy. Of course, we're gonna put some Bort Samson on it. Now I'm gonna do the laziest intro you, you've ever heard, basically. Alright, so that was all of the tips I had for you today. Please tell me in the comments if you enjoy this type of content. Do the subscribings and the likings, that's important. It helps me to become a big boy and grow on YouTube. And I'll see you next time when I... Yeah.